External SSD storage is kind of a big thing at the moment. Prices have been falling considerably over recent years. Apple are charging extremely premium prices to upgrade from the base 256 gig of storage on anything you buy from them. And with subscription services coming to absolutely everything, buying an SSD or even a bunch of SSD drives can be quite an attractive offer. But I am here to tell you that by doing this might not be the best thing to do. Now this video is sponsored by Keeper, more on them in just a moment. But if I can't convince you by the end of this video that buying an SSD is a bad idea, I'll also give you my recommendations on which SSDs are the best to buy if you really have to. And uh, spoiler alert, this is not the best one. Now the first problem and a mistake I see many people make with jumping in with buying you know, one or even multiple SSDs is using them to back up their data. Files, folders, family pictures, video footage, time machine backups, Windows backups, even backing up customer data. But the problem is after you've taken your backup, those SSDs will either do one of two things, either A, unplugged and stored somewhere, in which case they could potentially become lost or stolen, damaged, and in some extreme cases, just totally fail when not used for many years, or B, left connected, in which case open to accidental deletion or something malicious happening to it, like accessing a dodgy website or opening a dodgy email attachment. Now, in both of these cases, the ending result is all your data, which you trusted your SSD goes, uh, bye bye. Mostly land on the carpet. But there is a solution widely known in the tech industry as the 321 backup rule. Always have three copies of your data stored on two different types of media with one copy kept off site. Now, in my case, I have data stored on my laptop, which is then backed up to my NAS, which in turn is then backed up to the cloud. And as someone who has previously owned an IT support business, too often I've seen exactly those things happen with data loss from accidental damage, theft, or, or even just it stopped working. And as someone who doesn't want to spend all of my time doing tech support for my friends, for my family, it is often a much safer and just overall better outcome for everybody involved to use cloud storage. With cloud storage, you can often buy the cheapest laptop configuration and extend way beyond the built-in storage, like way beyond what you could fit on an SSD. And if you run out of space, well, you can just add more space without having to move all your data to a new location and without it consuming any space locally on your machine because it's all stored in the cloud and only downloaded when you need it. And yes, whilst it might be a more expensive option when you look at how much storage space you need and how many years you'll be paying the monthly fee for, if you need to know that your data will still be there and accessible when you need it in five, 10, 20 years time, it is a far better option than playing with the, the roulette wheel that is storing your data on an SSD. Cloud storage is protected against your house burning down or a simple hardware failure with your data, like typically stored in multiple locations for resiliency in case you know one location suffers a power outage or natural disaster and has protection in place against things like accidental deletion and virus protection. The question though is which cloud storage service should you use? Now, some of them are slow, some are expensive, some don't even back up your data, and with many of them having direct access to view your data. Now, the first option that most people will look at, of course, are the big guys. You've got the Googles, the Microsofts, Apple, and of course, Dropbox. But other than Dropbox from that list, none of them offer any form of backup of your data. Uh, yes, they have resilience, like I mentioned, by storing your data in multiple locations. But if you delete something and then say six months later, realize you want to get it back, you are fresh out of luck. Now you can purchase additional services to back up Google and Microsoft, but Apple is a standout option here not in a good way, where it is next to impossible to regularly and reliably back up your own Apple data. And then thirdly, all of these providers can actually access your data, you know, features such as scanning your photos to do facial recognition, but to the point that if forced by law, they will give other people access to your data if they have a good reason to, you know, warrant giving them access. And so at what point does your data stop being your data? But with that said, there is the whole like, privacy versus convenience conversation right there, like over people willingly giving up their privacy for the convenience of features. And for most people, these are the safest place to store your data, as long as you're willing to pay the monthly fee. Now, personally, I use mostly Google Drive. My personal stuff is stored there. I have a Google Workspace account for my YouTube business. We shoot our videos, we upload all of the footage, 
and my editor downloads just one project at a time, which could be anywhere up to, and well, I guess above 100 gig per video edits that video and then offloads the footage and then downloads the next video. Now, the second option are providers who do care about your privacy. Now, I get offers from private cloud storage companies every week ask me to review their cloud storage, make a video about their cloud storage service. And I say no to basically all of them because regardless of how good their service might be and how good it might look, there are so many of them around that it is impossible for me to know which ones will still be around in like even a year's time, let alone longer than that. Now we've featured sync.com many times on this channel before, and they have been in business since 2011, I think it is, by offering truly secure, but also unlimited cloud storage, as long as you sign up for a three user accounts. Now, in fact, they are one of the only truly unlimited cloud storage providers still around after both Dropbox and Google dropped their unlimited storage offerings recently. And if you are storing a like a lot of data, like terabytes of data, these can work out significantly cheaper than just constantly buying, you know, a stack of SSDs. I see creators so often just stacking up their SSDs, proudly showing how much data they've got. Now you can also use Sync for both day-to-day -day files and for backing up your data. And with many of the same features as the big four, but this time it is totally secure, covering many compliance standards with everything being encrypted that not even Sync themselves can access your data. Now you can also get up to 365 day recovery to protect against any like accidental deletions and just a ton of additional features, which puts Sync up there on my list as one of the, the most trusted privacy focused cloud storage providers around. Similarly, iDrive is another one I've mentioned before, also offering a vast array of features. They're also privacy focused with you protecting your data with your own encryption key. And they've been a hugely popular one from my previous videos because they are offering some insane, I think it's like five terabytes of online storage for under 10 bucks for the first year, which is just a crazy price to pay. Now I have all of these linked down below, by the way, for sync.com and iDrive special deal and those kind of things. Now, one of the problems with all of these things though is once again, security. Now you have encryption keys to remember, passwords to log into the cloud services. You need your phone to generate those extra codes you need to log in. And even if you do use an SSD or a Mac or a Windows, if you turn on encryption, well, you'll need to remember the encryption password. Now, this is where the sponsor of today's video, Keeper, comes in with their incredibly useful and hyper secure password manager. Being able to store, organize, and manage all of these super long, super complicated passwords that you are never meant to be able to remember because they're complicated for a reason. Now with Keeper, you can access, you can store and share your passwords, your pass keys, and even multi-factor authentication codes across everything across iOS, Android, Mac, and PC, making it super easy to use unique passwords on each and every like different service you subscribe to. One for Netflix, one for Google, one for your bank. And then if you get caught up in some breach, like when 23andMe lost 7 million, yes, 7 million people's data, all you have to do is change one password and not worry about the other like 587 accounts that you otherwise would do if you use the same password on everything. I am a huge fan of people using a proper password manager and I reached out to Keeper asking if they would sponsor this video and they graciously agreed to it. So there will be a discount down below in this video description where you can pick up Keeper Personal or even Keeper Family at the cheapest price ever. So now you can use these cloud storage services or SSDs or whatever you choose without worrying about long and stupidly complicated passwords. Now, option three is for those who just want a solid backup for their files. They don't wanna store everything in the cloud. They just want to make sure that a second or perhaps third copy is stored safely away from their location. Just in case, say, the house burns down and they lose everything, including any SSDs they might have, and then at least they still have their data. Now, for the last three, maybe four years ago or so, I've been using Backblaze to back up my data. It is super affordable, it works well, it's fast. I've actually restored files using it. And recently, I saw some of my favorite content creators, Becky and Chris, also calling out how great Backblaze was. Backblaze, black, 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 Backblaze. Because they recently lost some files, so there are a couple of glowing endorsements for you there on Backblaze. Now there is a fourth option, which is to buy a NAS, a bunch of hard disks, but that can get very, very expensive and also quite complicated to like make sure it's then backed up properly and set up properly. But it does mean that you own all of your data if you just, you know, you don't wanna store it online for any reason. Now you can also install apps which then sync your photos from your phone so you can back up your camera roll to your NAS drive as well. But I won't actually go any further into like how a NAS works because I actually made a couple of videos about that already which I'll link in the video description 
down below. So the fifth and final option, like I said at the beginning, is if none of this suits you, is to buy an SSD. Because there are still some valid reasons to use SSDs. Perhaps you don't have much space locally and you need to work on large projects like video projects. Most of these videos can consume up to and above 100 gig of footage per video. Perhaps you need fast access to certain data. This is actually the reason why we have an ASS because if I need to suddenly grab all the files from like a 100 gig plus project, I can download them much faster when connected locally to an ASS via like 10 gig ethernet than way to download them via like Google and like, one gig internet. And maybe, like, maybe the other valid reason to use an SSD is for a time machine backup or a Windows backup. Now I do this whenever I upgrade my Mac or my PC, just take a full backup, store it somewhere to either restore it to the new machine or at least have a copy. So if any time in the next like year or so, I think I'm missing something, I can just quickly grab my SSD and then restore it from there. So in those situations, those specific situations, my recommendation would be the Crucial X10 Pro SSD. It is by far the safest bet when it comes to performance and durability. Now I've seen so like ridiculous amount, so many people buying the most popular SSD. I think this is listed on Amazon as the most popular one. This is uh, one from SanDisk. Even though there are wide, and I mean wide numbers of reports that these drives fail at random. So many people I know have lost data because of this, this one drive. And there are even lawsuits because it's actually caused by faulty firmware on these discs. And yet those drives are still being shipped into you know, who knows what condition. Now we'll also be making a comparison video soon just to run through all of the tests to show you kind of why. And of course, if my recommendation changes at any time, I'll be sure to update the link down below to whatever my current recommendation is. But if you are using SSDs as a backup with data that's just gonna sit there for years, especially if you're buying you know, multiple SSDs, just don't, and please don't do this. I know it might be unlikely, but something like a house fire could destroy everything and then you're left with like literally nothing. And there is even data to show that SSDs can just systematically fail when left unused for long. And I mean like years and years, like decades of time. So whilst it might not be likely, I'd rather not trust my lifetime of like family memories to just like one or a stack of these things just to save a few hundred bucks. But like I wanna be, old and in a nursing home and Tim Apple just plonks all of my photos down on my iPad 54 or my Apple Vision Pro 38 for me to just seamlessly scroll through instead of asking my like, great grandkids to go searching through my house for an SSD, which may or may not work. And even though the cloud storage services I use and recommend, yes, they cost monthly and yes, I am sick of subscription services, but cloud storage, along with the likes of a password manager, I'm happy to subscribe to because they are doing the heavy lifting for me. They're storing my data, keeping it secure, managing access to it, making sure it's fast, upgrading all of the, the back end, and so on. So with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.